From the very beginning of human manifestation, the seven spirit has been leading the humanity along the path because the Holy Spirit always follows a path with humanity. The nature of this path in the present period of our human evolution is determined by the sign of Aquarius, revealed by two wavy lines, symbolizing the living water, the living water being poured into humanity, and which, according to the sacred language, we are offered for free. As human beings, we do not only live in the era of change, but also in a change of era. We find ourselves at the beginning of 2160 year period that is known as the age of Aquarius or the Aquarius era. All consolidated structures are now eroding as new cosmic forces drive mankind towards new consciousness and towards renewal. We can say that this development, this change from a material to an etheric dominance, finds its purpose in building a regeneration out of degeneration. As humanity enters an Aquarius era, the harvest of the centuries must be reaped. That is why all of humanity is now placed under the new radiation field and under totally different atmospheric conditions, as we can observe clearly everywhere around us. The water bearer is emptying his vessel of living water over the entire earth, and under these completely different cosmic and atmospheric conditions, a new type of human being can be and will be formed, and that human being will be wholly adjusted to the newly created field of life and will act in accordance with that field. We are standing now at the beginning of new era, a new chapter in the development of the earth and of humanity begins because the influence of the Aquarius era is making itself felt ever more strongly. And as a result, both the world and mankind will experience radical changes. Radiation power of a very high and increasing vibration, originating from the original human field of life, is closely linked with a cosmic revolution. This cosmic revolution, of course, also affects our earthly atmosphere, with which we are all linked with. If the atmosphere changes, this will profoundly influence the natural, moral, and spiritual behavior of humanity. But if humanity is unable to adjust, unable to adjust itself to this change as to body, soul, and spirit, it will naturally be confronted with, with challenging difficulties with regard to the body and the soul. On the other hand, we have to say that the Aquarius era also contains great and glorious possibilities for all who do react positively to this atmospheric power. Our era, the time we live in right now, contains that possibility for all liberated individuals to return to, we can say, the Father's house. But to be able to react positively to this power, humanity needs a mediator. 
and that is the new reborn soul because only the spirit soul can adjust harmoniously to these cosmic developments. So we are making here a distinction between the natural and the divine soul. However, the problem is a nature-born human being does not possess the spirit soul, only the natural soul that will dissolve after death because it has not yet been reborn during life. That is why for every human being, the decisive question is, how do we achieve soul rebirth? How can we acquire the spirit soul, the divine soul? The absolute human being, the original microcosm, has the same inner structure as the macrocosm in accordance with the hermetic principle as above, so below. This axiom formed the basis for alchemy and it is formulated in the book Emerald Tablet, known also as the Tabula Smaragdina. Therefore, microcosm is exactly the same as a macrocosm. In the macrocosm, there are planets, suns, and zodiacal systems, and the same structure can be seen in the microcosm. Here too, planets, suns, and various systems have a task to fulfill the unity of the microcosm. Any disturbance in this order would be destructive to the great unity. Twelve constellations of our zodiac are the receptors for currents of energy descending from the macrocosm. These currents reach, out, reach our solar system and, of course, the Earth. In this way, Zodiac actually creates for us a window to the universe, a window that humans can be open in two ways either to the three-dimensional world we all live in or to the cosmic region where we should all return. So we can conclude that the microcosm is a universe on a reduced scale and the spirit is the central sun, the invisible sun of our system. Creations emanated from this central microcosmic sun were in the past in harmony with the divine plan of creation, and they were called the heavenly man. However, human being we know today is not even a shadow of that original man. Today he is imprisoned in the dialectical life field with only a small part of his former freedom left the freedom to fall even deeper, or the freedom to regenerate. So they, there are two roads, the road of regenerative ascent and the road of degenerative descent. And now we are still free to choose between these two roads. Now we also know that we have come to the dawn of a new day, a new era of totally new experience for the world and for the humanity. And this new day will place a new demand upon all of us, the fulfillment of a completely new way of life, where a new way of acting, a new directedness is necessary. And we ourselves have to react positively to that requirement by our actions. Because if our actions, our reaction is negative, then the new development will take us by surprise. And all of this depends on the condition of our light vesture. So what is the light vesture? 
In philosophy of our school, we refer to various vital fluids as the light vesture. This vesture is formed from five elements, the blood, the nerve fluid, the endocrine system, the serpent fire, and the consciousness. Even in a natural state of being, each of these fluids emit its own very powerful etheric light. That is why we speak of a light vesture. The light vesture is the representative of the etheric double in the body. We use the term etheric double to make clear that the material self lives by means of that double, of that vital body. The atoms of which the material self is composed do not exist independently, but they depend on their cooperation with the etheric atoms. That is why it is possible for a living being to express itself in this material world because of the presence of the light vesture. We can say that material atom is hollow and permeated by etheric atom. And through this link, it actually comes to life. So material atom is completely dependent on the etheric atom. But the task of the light vesture is not only to animate and maintain the material body. The true calling of the light vesture is much higher. And the fulfillment of this calling is dependent upon the way in which we use our light vesture today. We need to prepare our light vesture for its great and glorious task. Keeping our material body clean is of course very important, but proper care of our light vesture is so much more important. Very soon, this will probably be the most important task for all of us. So the question now becomes, how do we take care of our light vesture? This question is especially important today when everyone is so busy. We all are very busy doing anything and everything, while the most important thing, the highest thing of all, is pushed into the background. There are numerous examples around us. Stress, speed and pressure in our lives. The desperate efforts many make to maintain themselves socially or to climb up the social ladder. Rational thinking is a finite faculty, but it is considered and used today as the final goal of everything. It is called the I am, and it is burdened with so many speculations, assumptions, and with everything called knowledge. All these things place the nerve, the nerve ether, under so much tension that it becomes impossible to elevate our light vesture. But we cannot open ourselves to the light of the spirit and at the same time cling to all our social aspirations. We cannot combine the two. We cannot serve two masters. With the nerve fluid in such a state, our blood is also polluted and the head sanctuary and therefore the consciousness does not offer any possibilities for liberation. If we follow the same course as mankind in general, the functions of our head sanctuary are completely isolated. They crystallize into stereotyped activities, into cliches which makes impossible for light pressure to change in any positive way. The serpent fire, which among other things controls the nervous system, is not able to lead us to liberating initiatives. But if a person truly possess soul quality 
and daily tries to reinforce and to purify the radiation of the serpent fire, the astral fluid concent concentrated in the head sanctuary will become purified. Naturally, the sensory organs and the endocrine system will be adapted to this. In this way, the whole organism will become increasingly open for a truly Gnostic development. Five elements of our fivefold light vesture form one inseparable system. The quality and nature of these interacting vital fluids determine our level of vibration. They determine our general orientation with respect to life and also with respect to our state of health. Health and sickness are always directly related to the state of our light vesture. All the conditions we see and experience as illness are caused and maintained by disharmonies in the light vesture. The quality and nature of these vital fluids also determines whether one will remain in the ordinary earthbound animal state or whether one will have liberating possibilities of transcending the ordinary animal state. In the coming times, the resurrection out of the animal state will be imperative for all of us. This necessity will become highly acute. However, this is not in any way automatic process of development. No, all of us are confronted here with a personal choice. The new attitude to life must be chosen by each one of us personally. Each one of us will have to make a positive decision. Each one of us must enter the process. So we can conclude that if we want to connect with the new possibilities of our times, we will have to change completely and open wide the door of our heart. And we'll have to do that very soon, in fact, immediately, because only with an open, pure heart, our thinking will be fertilized by the light received by the heart. In this new state of being, the light vesture continues to carry out its task within the material body. But in addition, the light vesture is now detached and set free while person remains in an entirely conscious state. This is the state of being described in the holy language as being in the world, but no longer of the world. Mm -hmm.